part if you are being blessed already shout hallelujah amen so quickly i would like to invite uh, elder manuel as we go to a time of singing our chosen theme song amen amen so i have a very short time and i'm going to do something simple and um, we're going to learn our, our chosen theme song um, so can the media team project it I, I send the lyrics to you So it's a very simple song, and I'm, I'm first, I'll, I'll, I'll first sing it, then I'll teach you how to sing it, all right? We are called, we are chosen to declare his mighty word. We are called, we are chosen by the Lord. I will take it again. We are called, we are chosen to declare his mighty word. 
We are called, we are chosen by the Lord. And then there's, there's the second part. We have been set upon empowered to bear the fruit in the nations. We have been set upon empowered, empowered. to take it from the start and then we are going to sing it through all right so we are called we are chosen to declare his mighty words let's go we are called we are chosen by the lord by the lord we are called we are taking take it we are called we are called we are chosen We are called. 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 We are called.
are chosen. We 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 are called. 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 We are chosen. 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 We are called. We are called. We are called. We are called. We are chosen. We are chosen. We are chosen. We are called. 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 To the nations. We are called. We are called. Praise the Lord. This song was given to our overseer. So Please, can we put our hands together? This, for... this was this was by understanding. All right. So we are we are taking it from the start. Only you. One, two, go. No, no, no. Uh, we are called, we are chosen, yet to proclaim his mighty words. We are called, we are chosen by the Lord. All right. We are called, we are chosen to proclaim his mighty words. All right, let's go. You are called, we are called, we are chosen by the Lord. Take it back, take it back. We are called, we are called, we are called. Chosen to proclaim. I want to hear you sing. We are called. We are called. We are chosen by the Lord. By the Lord. Wait, wait, wait. We have been served. We have been served. Up and power. And power.
I am chosen. I want you to tell someone I am chosen. I am called. I am called. I am called. I am called. I am chosen. I am chosen. I am chosen. I am chosen. I am called. 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 I am chosen. 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 So we are called. We are called. We are. We are called. Please, may we have a take our seat? May we have a take our seat? God bless you. Praise the Lord. Why don't you give the Lord a mighty clap offering? Hallelujah. Amen. People of God, it's good to see you all again. How many of us were at the games this morning? Oh, just give me a wave. Wow. 6.30, huh? Sharp, sharp. And you are seated here again. Help me tell the person next to you, you have done well. Wow. I've, I've been looking for a window in the session so that we can have our presentations. Um, we thought we could do it this afternoon, even though um, everything is set in terms of the trophies and all that. But maybe we'll wait for our brothers and sisters who are yet to join us. So can we, can we shift it to the later session? Would that be fine? Amazing. All right, people of God. As you're already aware, we are here today to empower ourselves. And every person, you are the product of your mindset. When people see you, they may not see so much more than what you think or the things that go through your mind. And so when you get opportunity to renew your mind, when you get opportunity to assess what will help you to engage life, what will help you to, to be renewed, you always need to grab it. And I'm not just talking about any information. Are we together? We live in a world where there's so many information out there. But, but we are talking of information that are relevant in our days. And as people of God, we have not only been called um, to be eternally conscious, knowing that one day we will all depart from here and be with our Savior, but even as we are here on earth, we've been called to be relevant. Is that right? So as part of our relevance, we give ourselves to learning, we give ourselves to um, being developed and equipping ourselves day in and day out. I mean, one of the things that our bishop preached about yesterday is for us to increase capacity. Can you help me tell the person next to you, increase capacity? <laughs> Wonderful. And so we, we, we are here this very afternoon to increase capacity. And helping us to do that this day, um, I think we, 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 we have two major sessions for today, but I would want us to just take this part right away, and then um, later we will handle our youth empowerment discussion. I think later in the day we are going to break ourselves into groups where we will have very serious discussions. Is that okay? Right. But for now... We are going to receive a presentation from our dear brother and our dear, I, I don't know how to put it, but to me, he means a lot to me. He means a lot to me. I was in his home um, with my dear wife and our baby girl, and it was amazing. We had an amazing time of encouragement in ministry, an amazing time of increasing in knowledge. He's very knowledgeable very knowledgeable and one thing i love about him is when you see him he, he he's very humble always comes down to everyone's level to relate with them and these are people 
we love to associate with. Amen. And so, without wasting my time, I would want to invite our dear brother, who is also, um, should I say, the leader of um, a single group helping the young ones um, from different walks to also grow in God and be established well in God. And today we are privileged that he is in our midst. People of God, let's do it the CEO people that way. As I invite our dear brother, Henry Apia Jemfi. So we put our hands together and celebrate that Jesus in him. Celebrate that Jesus in him. Celebrate that Jesus in him. Good to be here. All right. I shall we pray before we start everything? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you once again. We just want to adore you. We worship you as your word is coming. I pray that you don't let it be from me, but let it be from your own mouth. Speak to your people. Speak to your children. Let me be just an empty vessel so that it can use through me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So, I'm looking at your theme, and it's really, really powerful, right? Repositioning the local church for the maximum impartation in the nation. That means you and me, we are ambassadors. If you want to make an impartation in a nation, it does not need a lot of people. It means that me and you, we got to make a, a small impartation within our lives, within our workplace, within our school within any place that we are going to find ourselves into. But I would like to talk today about the youth, uh, financing for the youth. Ren, uh, maybe the media team will be able to put something here for me. I would like to ask something here. How many of you are working, and how many of you are working and schooling? Just raise up your hand. How many of you are working? just working. Okay. All right. And how many of you are schooling and at the same time working? Okay. It looks like it's a tie. All right. I love that. And I would like to ask a question. When was the first time you had your first bank account? Your first bank account. <laughs> Let me see. When was your first time you had your first bank account? Sorry? 2018. How old were you? <laughs> All right. <laughs> I don't want to put anybody in trouble. All right. No football age here, right? <laughs> Yeah, still counting. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go then. All right. And where was your first credit card? No one? So that means your credit is good. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. What about when was the first time you earned your own money? At what age did you first earn your own money? Yes. 19. Which year was that? 2019. And you were 19. Oh, it looks like you'd be a rapper. 19, 2019. All right. <laughs> okay. All right, let me tell you a quick story about my... I have three children. My first son is here. And... Uh, 
and the other, they are twins. Unfortunately, they are not here. So, one day they decided to get something. They wanted to work and get something. So that they wanted to buy something. So, we told them, look, we are not going to give you that money. You have to earn for it. So, they started combing through the whole house, asking. They went to their auntie. Auntie, do you have anything for us? Dad, do you have anything for us to do so that you can pay us? Because we told them, we are not going to give you that money for such a thing. You have to work. You have to earn it. They are eight. So they started looking through. And they pestered everybody in the house. They went to the cousin. They went to the brother. They went to everybody just to earn something. Now, most of us, as we can see, our first earning was when we were above 18. Or maybe, if we are lucky, 16. Let's look at it. When was the first time your parents taught you how to work with your financing or how to work with money? At what age? 16. Okay, which year? <laughs> which year? Yeah, I'm interested. 2017. 16, 2017. Anybody else? Not yet. I do understand. I had similar. Okay? With my mom, there is nothing like pocket money. I give you food. I clothe you. You go to school, so why do you need pocket money? We started with my son, my other son, the same thing, but we saw that he's growing too fast. I don't know what we give him. So, me and my wife decided that when he was in high school, normally he doesn't ask anything, because if he needs anything, he will ask. So we decided that from time to time, we will add something for him. And he started storing some money way before he went to high school. His aim was to get a car when he's 18 by himself. But the line says, we have to pay for that. It's a fair deal. During the course of it, he wanted to get a bike. We told him we are not going to get into it. You have a bike? But he said, no, I really want a good bike. We said, it's on you. So he used the money that he stole, the money that he has saved, to buy the bike. Ladies and gentlemen, if we don't start, or when our parents didn't teach us from the beginning, when we grow up, that's when we mess up a lot. Why is it that I don't want to sound more political here. Why is it that there are some countries that have a lot of natural resources, but we are still struggling? I will leave it there. I wouldn't go in deep so that I can, I can sometimes travel to some African country. Okay? All right. Now, a quick thing, the next slide, please. There is a statistic to know the literacy about financing. Now, in 2016, as a result, as you can see here, 33% of the third of adults are financially literate worldwide. This means that about 3.5 billion adults lack understanding of basic financial concept. No wonder we have a lot of problems including me and you. Now, the next time I, did, I, I started to check which countries started have a lot of, you know, they, they, they've been working on it. And we got to know that from Canada, you can see that there is a, a huge impact on that. Canada, Australia, Denmark, Finland, Germany, and etc. So it looks like more of Europe. What about Asia? China, they're very good. They're very productive. 
But in Asia, they also have that problem. So I said, okay, maybe that was 2016. Let's go to 2023. We check, and it's the same thing. And it's the same thing. Again, 33% of the worldwide literacy. And 3.5 billion adults, the same thing. So that means we have a lot of work to do in our lives. So, if I were asked, what is money? How would you explain what is money? Don't worry. There is nothing like you, you've made a mistake or you've bombarded. Okay? Please, don't worry. If I say, what is money? How would you quote what is money? Yes, please. A store of value. Okay. Anybody else? Sorry? A means of exchange or a medium of exchange. Oh, very good. Okay. Yes, please. Excellent. Well, I agree with him. In the olden times, we were doing butter trading. So I have a salt, you have a fish. Ah, let's change. It was there. All right? I started to quote it in this way. In short, money is a medium of exchange, just as all of you have said. It's an agreement or it's an agreed upon items you can use to make a purchase, trade, or pay off debt. Debt, we are going to talk about it. Don't worry. Okay. The medium of exchange will differ in many countries. That's why, okay, a quick question. Which country do you think has the strongest currency? Sorry? <laughs> Brother, don't put me into trouble. <laughs> yes, please. Kuwait. Mm -hmm. The first time I saw that, I said, no, that is wrong. But yeah. Euro, dollar, pound, they are more far back. But most of the times, what we think is what? Dollar, 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 dollar. But they are far back. And very soon, things are changing also. But we'll talk about it later. Let's look at the principle or the principles about money you need to know. The first thing that you need to know is that God owns everything. You don't own anything. That money that you have is from God. That ain't yours. That isn't yours. That's the first thing. If you put it in your mind that the money that you have is not yours, but it's God, it will be the best for you. That's the first thing for you to understand. In Exodus 19, verse 5, it says, Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasure possession among all people, for all earth is mine. If you look at also Job 41, verse 11, it says that, Who has given to me that I should repay him? Whatever is under the whole earth, or the whole heaven is mine. So, if you understand the point that money, the money is not yours and is of God, the second part that you have to understand is discipline. This is one of our problems that we all have. Discipline. Money is all about discipline. You can't be in discipline when you have money. That's, that's why a lot of athletes in their youth, they have problem with money. How many of you knows Mike Tyson? Ion Mike Tyson. Man, that dude, his neck size alone will intimidate you. There was a time that his punch, when he punches you, is like a 50 kilo. That's hitting you. And you'll be afraid. 
Most people were intimidated. But when he was in his prime, when, when he was in his youthful time, he's misused a lot of his things. He wasn't disciplined. Just like me and you now. He bought a tiger. How can a person buy a tiger and plays with the tiger? Until one day, the tiger scratched him and he decided to think. He was the type that he went out with his wife. When he was coming, he fought with his wife. I think he had a, a Bentley or uh, a Rolls Royce. And when he had this problem, he had a small accident. The police came, and do you know what he did? He gave away the Rolls Royce so that he wouldn't have a problem. He misused that time that he had. Somebody would say, well, I don't have Rolls Royce. Yeah, it's true. But what you have, you misuse it. You are just like Mike Tyson. Just that maybe you don't have the 50 kilos of, you know, a punch. You don't have that one yet. Maybe later on when you train. When you have money, if you don't take care, you might decide to serve money. Just as in Matthew 6, 24, he says, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will devote to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. A lot of us, the moment we have some small amount of money, any small change, man, the way that person will even come to the church. His swag. The way the person will even pretend. Maybe he's, he's you know, an, uh, he plays organ. And now when he comes, you know, he has some rings around here. Maybe got some goat teeth. And we will sit down. And, you know, the way he will even put his hand. You even verse. Why? Because he got some small money. And that's why Luke, Luke um, 12, 34, he says, For where your, ha- your treasure is, there is where your heart also is. I'm not saying money is bad. No, 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 no. Don't get me wrong. If you have money, it's quite good. It actually helps to change a lot of things. I don't want to get the wrong picture out of it. So imagine that, you know, you have some money and you can go on holidays. Or you can go back to your country and come back on holidays. When I was schooling, I always saw that a lot of people, summer holidays, they were going back to Ghana or to Nigeria, to Uganda, to other places. Others were going to UK, United States, Canada. Oh, boy, I was sitting down. Why? My, my pocket was dry. <laughs> so if you have, it's good. But how do you get it? That's the most important thing. Right? Why is it that rich people are stingy? They say rich people are very stingy, right? Why do you think so? Because they work for the money. Why does he want to give it to you? When you are not ready to work for it. If you see any rich person giving you something, that means he sees something there. I don't want to sound political, and I don't want to uh, you know, discriminate anybody or any other kind of company, but most of them, you see that, okay, they go to some other country. They are going to help. Why do you think they went there? Just to help? No. Exchange. Yeah. They have a site there. And most of the times, we Christians, we have one thing. Oh, no, I have to do it like that. This is how we have to do it. It has to be in this way. 
you are wrong. You have to be strategic. But I'll talk about strategic very soon. The third one is we have to worship with our money. You cannot be in church or serve or be in mission without adding your pocket. You can never do that. When God blesses you, he blesses you so that you can bless others with what he has blessed you. So if you have a car, he wants you to use the car to bless others. You see that a dear brother is walking by. Stop. Pick that person. Let that person also enjoy the small air condition you're enjoying. Do you want to enjoy only? That's not how it is. Our concept of understanding money or understanding financing, sometimes we got it a little bit wrong. And this is what normally block us from blessing. But the moment you are worshiping also with your money, you also have to be careful. As I said before, the moment you get something, you start to be proud. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. You've been to some conferences. You've been to some countries. Yes. But if you're not careful, you will lose it. Money is just like a wind. In Ecclesiastes, it says, if you're not careful, you will chase the wind. And to be ending, not ending, it doesn't have limitation. It has wings. Now you have it. You, you've seen the chart. Today, Bill Gates is the richest person in the world. Now it is what? Uh, Elon Musk. Very soon, there will be another person. So as you can see, even those that are rich, it keeps on changing. So what you have to understand is that what you have right now, you have to manage it in a proper way. Fight for contention or contentment. If, if, you, if you are not careful, you might be, there are two types of discontentment. There are others that are very, very, you know, they would like to do things. They are very ambitious. It's good. But if you don't take care, you get into the luxury aspect and you will get lost. And there are others that want to do the Holy Cole style. I'm a Christian brother. I'm a Christian sister. I don't need to get this one. It's too much. It's too flashy. Yeah? A lot of us are like that, isn't it? Mm -hmm. They are not here, right? They didn't come. Good for them. <laughs> now, I'll tell you one story. It's about me. I, I, there was one brother that um, I helped him to come here. I wouldn't mention his name or the country or anything for me to be safe. Yeah, I know. You guys will go and tell. It's on, you know, internet. So, I helped him. And there was a time that sometimes he even asked me some money for me to help him. And all of a sudden, this brother has changed. He started driving Jaguar. Started driving uh, a BMW 7 Series. Oh boy, if I sit in that car, it's as if I'm in a home. Then I saw him a half a million slaughter Range Rover, the highest top. Awesome. I was happy for this brother. And I said, hey man, <laughs> tell me, what, what kind of business are you into? I'd like to get into it. Yeah. Later on, I got to know that it wasn't that business that I would like to do. <laughs> so I back off. Sometimes too much of the ambition will get you into trouble. And that's what God has given us wisdom for us to use. 
It's not all the time that God will appear to you. Solomon, hear to me. I am the Lord your God. The father of your grandfather, great grandfather, great auntie, and etc. God will not be coming all the time in this way. No. He has given you this for you to use it. So if I wouldn't have used this, imagine at this great, nice program and news flash. Normally, when you're doing anything illegal, the police look at you very, very carefully. They don't catch you when things are very bad. No, 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 no. It doesn't make the story. It doesn't catch it. They catch you when things are really nice for you. So imagine that I did something dubious, and now we're at this program, and I'm talking. All that you hear, re, 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 swat. About 15 of them, just come to catch me, 15 of them are here. 16 police uh, officers enter here. Who is Henry? I say, I am. And they will handcuff me. Then there will be some journalists. That's when they will catch you. So I'm telling you, please, if you're doing anything that is against the law, remember, there is a saying that all days for the thief, one day for the master. And you have to be ready for that. And it's going to be painful. Really, really painful. The next part is that you have to kill greed. If you walk with contentment and if you work with killing greed. So imagine that if I was greedy and I decided to just pursue this, my brother, and get what he is getting right now, what would end me now? Really bad. So somebody would say, but I'm, I'm not like a politician. I'm not actors or actresses. I'm not like, you know, some celebrities that I would know. It is in your DNA. It can appear at any time. It doesn't matter that you are a 15-year, um, you know, long-serving Christian. It doesn't matter. Sometimes we, we, can, we can just weep. Elijah was weeping over some certain things. He said, oh, look at me. It's only me. All the prophets are dead. And God was just sitting up and just looking at him. He was just lamentating, lamentating, lamentating. Then God said, hey, keep quiet. There are 400 prophets that are hiding. You are not the only one. So sometimes we have to be careful. It doesn't matter who you are. You could be greedy at anything. Maybe it's not of money. Like you could be greedy of your dear sister's clothes, the way she has done her nails. Or maybe a lot of friends call her. Or a lot of contracts she gets. Or the teachers like her. The next part, be mindful of debt. Feeling of responsible or responsibility is just like you are paying your rent. How many of you are renting a place? I think everybody. You pay rent, isn't it? Do you think it's your duty to pay the rent or you just have to pay? It's a duty. So that's the same thing you have to do when you have a debt. That is why a lot of you I hope that person is not here. When you are coming or when you call to anybody, the person says, oh, that person is calling, definitely wants some money. Is that person here? So that I can pray for that person. For that demon to get out. There are many people like that. You take it like a habit of just owing people. Sometimes we have to just be careful of it. 
When you maximize your, for example, okay, let me give you a story of mine. We saw that we had a debt, all right? It's not a sin for you to have a debt. Let me, let me clarify it that way. If you have a debt, it's not, it does not mean that you're a sinner, okay? Everybody get a debt here. I do. You do. You do also. So we had a debt. And we decided that if we will wait, it will take a year for us to finish it. We have to pay it in installments. So we had a chance to do something. We got some money. And we decided to pay off that debt. Now, do you know what happened? After paying that debt, we're able to get some money for paying off the debt earlier. Because we took it like what? A responsibility. And later on, I found out that, oh, there are even some insurance that I was paying. And later on, I contact them and they also pay me back because I was able to pay that debt or we were able to pay that debt earlier. So when you have a debt, you have to make sure that it's your responsibility, your sole responsibility for you to finish that debt. You have to pay it off. That's why a lot of Christians, believers, have this problem. That's why many people don't want to borrow as money. We go and they are running away. Who are you? Are you a Christian? Oh, no, 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 no. Definitely not. They don't want to. Manage your money. That's the main one. Wouldn't it be nice if there is a single Bible verse that would tell us how to manage our money? There isn't. There is no single Bible verse that would direct us and say, do like this, do like this, do like this, do like this. No. So I'm sorry. If you were thinking of that, I will give that verse. Then I'm sorry, I cannot give you that verse. But I would like to have you a que- uh, give you a question. Why do a lot of people that, okay, let me rephrase it. When we are broke, when we are broke, when there is nothing, la jean, kuri, all right, some naira, some other money. When we don't have any zloty, we are very, very good at managing our things. The moment you get the alert on your account, you forget all the plans. Does it happen to everybody here? <laughs> it does. Okay. Why is it that many lot of winners, after winning the jackpot, they come back to square zero? I did some, I checked on Uncle Google, all right? And it says, according to the National Endowment for Finan- uh, Financial Education, 70% of lottery winners go bankrupt within a few years. There was one woman that she, she won, I think, $1 million. She was working in one kind of fast food chain. And the only thing she did well was she bought, uh, I think, treasure bills for the two children. The rest of the money, whoo, she pimped her car. Beautifully, pinky, just pink. Right? Inside with some leather, I think, some tiger, you know, skin inside the car. With some table speakers and everything. Her house and a whole lot of things. Before, she was collecting, let's say, $15 an hour. Now, she went back and she's collecting $5 an hour. So, when we get money... We forget about the plans. It does happen to everybody. So I'll give you some few things. One, make a plan. That's the first thing. How to manage your financing. Make a plan. Now, when you are making your plan, 
These are the few things you have to ask yourself. What is your total income? Many of you, if I may ask, how much you get a month, you might not be able to answer me. Because before the month even ends, you are in debt. Second, what are your monthly expenses and debt that you have to repay? As I said before, if you have debt, it's your solely responsibility for you to pay it. So it's part of it. You have to put it to your plan. The next, how much do you need to tithe? It's part of it. The other part, how much do you need to save and invest? Of course, when you have something left. I'm talking about that one. After that, when you know your income and your expenses, here are the four questions that you need to ask yourself. What cost can I reduce? I know, some brothers and sisters, what you need to cut the cost off. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about it. How much more money can you pay towards your debt? Just as I said before, because of, uh, we saw that we have one year more, but if we are able to pay it earlier, it will help us. So we decided to pay it early, and it did help us. I will explain to you why we did that. How much, or how can you save more money, and do you, I have one year plan or two year plan? It's very, very important that you have to have a plan for yourself. Not only when you are broke, but when the money also comes. Stick to the plan. It's going to help you. And the last part, the second part, the first one was make a plan, and the second part, work with the plan. And that's all. That's the equation and the solution and the portion that I can give you. Now let's look at the most common financial mistakes. Most common financial mistakes. Excessive and ferocious, uh, frivolous spending. That's like silly spending. How many of you know this uh, NBA player, Shaq O'Neal? All right. He earned, he, he got a contract, $1 million. He said, man, I get $1 million. All right. He went to Mercedes dealership. He went to get Mercedes, I think, E-class or S-class. Black, tinted glass, alloy rim, spinning, $115,000. He went home with it, blasting the music. He reached home, the father said, hey, man, that's a beautiful Mercedes. Man, I need to get a Mac also. So he said, no problem, dad, I got you. Come on, let's go. He drove the father to the Mercedes dealer again. Bought another one, that same size, 150. They drove home. The mother saw him and saw the father and said, what? Your father didn't carry you. I'm talking about this guy is seven feet tall, so he's like that. Okay? He's a big dude. He was one of the few MBS players that he shattered the rim. All the time, he was shattering the rim with all the glass broken. So, the mother said, I also need one. So, he went to the dealership again and got the mother 120 by a smaller Mercedes. So, how much has he spent? 420. All right. He has to look fly. He's an NBA player. So he has to make his crib really, really beautiful. He got some plasma TV, huge one. Has to change the clothes, the shoes. This dude wears almost 50, size 50. All right? He's a big dude. Some chains and everything. So all of them cost around 80 grand. How much? It has not yet reached a week. 
So his agent called him and said, hey, Ben, what are you doing? He said, Ben, that's my money. I got you also. He said, oh, wait, 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 wait. Have you paid the tax? Tax? <laughs> yeah, you have to pay the tax. After that, you have to pay me. I'm your agent. After that, you have to pay some other things. He started thinking. Now, when he was cautioned, because of that, before he was not a university graduate, he went to university, he graduated, he has his PhD, and now, in almost all the states, he has a business over there. He has completed. He has finished his MBA career, but he gets a lot of money. Why? Because he decided to change his aspect about his financing. The next one is never ending payment. There are a lot of applications on our phones. It will tell you uh, it's for free. After 15 days, you pay just 100 lottie. Okay, 15 days, I will delete it. Now, on the 16th day, you remembered. It's already deleted from you. <laughs> you are short 100 lottie. Actually, this sometimes my wife forgets about it. She had, um, wh what is this, poly um, this website that uh, you can watch some Polish movie, I've forgotten. No, that different one. Sorry? No, no. Sorry? No, not HBO. This is international. This is more Polish. VOD, no, there is another one. I've forgotten the name, but I'll tell you. So she, we had a youth meeting, so she decided to pay and then uh, to just uh, uh, choose the free you know, trial. So after that, after the youth meeting, we are going to delay it. It said the uh, CDA, yeah. After that, I will just, you know, delay the app uh, or delay the account. Two days, three days. One month, hundreds lottie. Hey, babe, what happened? Oh, I forgot. That is what happens. Never ending spending. There are petty, petty things. If you don't close it up, if you don't patch it, you are going to lose a lot. Yeah, it's five lottie. It's ten lottie. But if you carry it all up, how much is it going to be? That's a lot of money that you are losing within a year. The next one is living on borrowed money. <laughs> it's not my money. As long as it's not my money, I can spend it. Yeah, just like you are having your parents' money. When my son wants to go and buy something... And he's using our money, it's cool. He will buy what he wants. But when it's his money, he starts to think about it. <laughs> he looks at it and he says, no, 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 not this one. Why? It's mine. It's his own money. He doesn't want to. And as I said, if you make it like a responsibility of paying the debt, it becomes a proper thing for you. Another part is buying a new car electronics. Within this era, it is more common. iPhone 15 is coming. Man, I need to get that one. I need to get that one, iPhone 15. I'm saving for that. All your savings, you just go and put it. Or some of you, probably the guys, I need to get a car. I need to get a car. You know, it's, summer is hot. Yes, only three months is hot. The rest of them is cold. But yeah, you said you need a car. So some of you, you even don't know what entails for you to get a car. I remember my mom got a Mercedes. 
her first car she bought. So she called me, son, I bought a car. I said, wow, that's beautiful. What car is it? Mercedes. Okay. What type of Mercedes? It's silver. Yes. What type of car it is? Uh, I don't know. Okay, is it petrol or diesel? I think petrol. Okay, good. Mercedes, we have E-class, A-class, S-class, E-class, uh, G-class. Which of them? Son, I don't know. It looks like, you remember this mother, uh, this my friend's mother's car? Ah, okay, mom. All right, it's C-class. All right, C-class, we have C-180, C-200, C-220, C-300. Which of them? Son, stop worrying me. A friend of mine also, the, wife, the husband bought a the car. They were going to buy the car. And the wife said, as long as it's red and there is some leather inside, I'm cool with it. That's all. So most of us, we don't even know. Why do you even need the car? You're living at the heart of the city. Let's say you're living in Warsaw. From your house, your flat, to the working place is just three tramps. Two bus stops by the bus or so. No, you want to get a car. So, what type of car do you want? We have SUV. We have Combi. We have Sedan. We have Hatchback. Which of them? <laughs> Anything. Okay. What type of car do you want? Is it petrol, diesel, hybrid, electric? Which one? <laughs> Anything that I can fool. Okay, all right. Do you have a garage? What's the engine capacity? I want a car that is strong. Look, I went to Ghana, and I saw that a lot of our dear brothers over there, they are misusing resources. The fuel there is almost like here. And some people are driving 5.7 liter engine. Here, already is with gas, LPG. But there, some people are driving 3.0, 2.0 without any LPG. Do you know when they put the LPG? When the car is old. So what's their sense of it? When the car is old and it has a lot of faulty, why don't when it is new, you put it? Or get a car that has a smaller engine. You're going to work from here to, let's say, just 10 minutes or 15 minutes, 20 minutes. So you don't need a big engine. You need a smaller engine. 1.0, it's okay. 1.1, 1.2. Longer journey is different. Unless you want to do Uber. Uber you don't need 3.0 engine. You don't need a Cadillac. You don't need a Range Rover. You need a car that is more economical. These are the small petty things that we let it slip through our fingers. We just let it slip through our fingers. The next one, spending too much on a house or a flat. Oh, I'm now in Warsaw. Krakow, Wrocław, Poznan. As long as I'm here and I have my own flat, three bedrooms, a big hall, and you are not earning so much. Cut your coat according to your size. That's what I'll tell you. If I were you, when I started, I was in the hostel. I lived in the hostel. You know that you earn around 3,000 slotte. Why do you need a flat that is around 2,000? How do you pay the utilities? How do you pay other things? So if I were you, I would stay in a, in a hostel, a cheap hostel, that would pay like 500. I keep the remaining two five, 
then you can use the plan that I told you. Then you can save. But no, you just want to show off a flat that is in the center. A flat that has a big flat screen that I can see the center of the city. I can see it. Or maybe close to Old Town because you like the expensive stuff. Yeah, very soon you'll be drained so much, so quick. The next one is using equity like a piggy bank. Now, when you are saving something, it's for emergency. So if, uh, if you are saving money that you're going to use it to travel, you keep that money till you have it, till that time comes. But you don't make it as if it is a kind of, um, you know, uh, thing that you're going to just put your hand in all the time. The next one is investing in your retirement. It's very, very important. If you don't learn how to invest in your retirement, by the time that you'll be ending, we have problems. Thanks be to God. Most of us might be able to stay in Europe. Some of us will go home. But if you go home, work with this. Work with some other, you know, businesses that will help you with your retirement. Don't let it be like when you're in the old age. Because I always, I always think about it. When I'm older, I'm a teacher. If I'm 60, I would I be still teaching? What would be next? What should I do next? So that's why you have to invest in your retirement. Not having plan is the worst thing for you to have. No plans. And the last one that a lot of people, a misconception that people have. The myth about women spending everything they have or get. Well, news flash. Let's look at Proverbs 31, 10 to 30, uh, 31. It says, a noble, a wife of a noble character. So I hope all the women would like to be like that. So let me break it into pieces for you. Very good, guys. I love it. The media team, you're doing well. So a wife of a noble character, who can find she's worth more than a rubies? So she's very valuable. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. How many of you that your future husband or how many of you are married here? Okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> Oh, yeah, 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 I know. <laughs> the single ones, okay, <laughs> all right. So, also for you guys, how many of you could bring some value to your relationship, to the person that you're going to marry, to the person that you are married to? Because the husband has a full confidence in him, in her, sorry. She brings good, him good, not harm, all the days of her life, when he's asleep, he's not afraid that you might shave off his eyebrow. <laughs> and there are many stories in this world that, you know, when you hear some of them, you get dismay and you might choose not to even marry. But that, I'll pray for you get married. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I love that. She, uh, she selects wool and flax and works with her eager hands. I know. Nowadays, everybody is, you know, the ladies would like to wear some things on their hand. My niece is here. And when she did her nails, I asked her, can you type? And she said, yeah. And you look. Da, 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 da. I'm not talking about that, okay? <laughs> I'm talking about working with your hands. Here, work with your hands. If you know how to work with your hands, your husband will respect you. Look, there are things in the house, and my son knows it, and everybody knows it. If I don't do it, by the time I'll come home, she has done it. 
And normally I feel bad out of it. And I told her, please, never do that. But she still does it. And my son has joined her also. I don't like changes so much. We have a sofa in the living room. The moment I left to go to work, my son teamed up with my wife, and they changed the whole place. So that when I come, I wouldn't have anything to say. <laughs> so this woman has an eager hand. She works with her hand. She's like a merchant ship bringing her food from afar. When in the olden times, when a merchant ship is coming, people are jumping. People are happy because there are some exotic stuff coming. There are some new things that are coming. So this woman is just like a merchant ship coming. Are you like that? She gets up while it is ni it's night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. You are so stingy and you are so self-centered, ego-centered, that even a small food that you have, or even a gum, bubble gum, you don't want to share. So how would you be noble in that? She considers a field and buys it out of her earnings and she plants a vineyard. Meaning, she works, she has something. When times are bad, she takes care of the house, not to rely on the man alone. When I was small, they say, what a man can do, a woman can do. So let's all do together, isn't it? Yeah, we go on restaurant. If it is hundreds lot, we pay 50-50. Isn't it? <laughs> Nothing like 30-70 or 80-20. Nothing like that. You also, you are working. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her task. She's a tough woman. She's strong to work. So my dear ladies, you have to endure this time. Yes, you're going through problems now. But that makes you strong. That will make you tough. That will prepare you for what you're going to be in the future. Look, gold, the last time when I was preaching here, I told you that gold goes into the fire seven times before it reaches perfection. And job is not something that you have to enjoy. Remember about that. A work, your work, is something that it has to be a pain for you. Sometimes you have to wake up early in the morning and go to work. It's very painful. Yes, that is what is called work. She sees that trading is profitable and her lamp goes not out of in the night. So she's ready to help at any time. In her hands, she holds the, the stuff and grabs and spindle it within her uh, fingers. She opens her arms to the door and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for the household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. So this is a woman that is prepared at any time. And that's like my wife. And that's like my mother. They are prepared at any time. Because they know in times of difficulties, what do we do? For example, when it is time, time that we have difficulties, me and my wife, we just sit down to reanalyze. That's when we talk a lot. So, so much. And we kick the kids up, go up, up, upstairs and leave us alone. We need to talk. We need to analyze some certain things. Her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes his seat among the elders. Nobody will respect your husband, your fiancé, your boyfriend if you don't give that respect. Remember about that. I'm not going to respect somebody if you are treating that person awful. If you don't give respect to your father, 
how do you expect me to give that respect to your father? It cannot be. It cannot work. So you have to do that diligent, and then I can do that. Okay, quickly. She is clothed in strengthen. Oh, no, no, let me jump up. She makes linen garments and sells them and then supplies the merchants with the sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at days to come. So, ladies, you have to learn how to laugh more. Okay? Laugh more. Not all the time, oh, I don't have this. It's, it's, it's difficult. It's all the time. No, 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 no. Be positive. All right? She is clothed with this uh, strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom. Just like Abigail. Do you remember the story of Abigail? David was pursuing, and his people were hungry. He went to this place, and the guy said, who are you? You are not a yet a king. Why would my, my, my food, my, why should I give my food to you? And he was so mean to David. And David said, okay, I swear to the Lord of hosts that if I become a king, you and your household, you are going to die. As he left, as David left, the wife heard about it. So wise woman, she took some food, used the shortcut, cut open and cut up with David. And he said, my Lord, forgive me and forgive my husband in which he mistreated you and gave food. David saw that this woman is an ideal woman. Are you the type that the way you are, nobody can be like you? Are you the type that sometimes you are not able to give a good you know, advice? If you cannot have a good advice or give an, a good advice to your common friend, how are you going to give an advice to a proud husband of yours? You have to learn from now. With your friends. Little by little. And after that, you can graduate. Have you seen anybody who is from grade six and jumped to university before? Who? <laughs> who? <laughs> All right, let me, let me finish it quickly. Um, her children... Her children raises and call her blessed, her husband too. So because she's hardworking, she's valuable. Women, please, value. You are very valuable. You are too valuable for somebody to take you cheap. I'm sorry to say that. Put some value to weight. When the person sees you, they say, oh, yes, there's a woman, and I want to marry her. Not just date. Not just funny, funny stuff. <laughs> All right? Is that person here? Okay. All right. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them, so you are exceptional. Charm is deceptive, and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is praised. How many minutes do I have? I should continue. All right, let's go. I love that. Now, let's look at some development of how to manage your financing. Or, um, let me see. Okay, beautiful. Yeah. First, set goals. You need to set goals. Me and my wife, we work from September, middle of September, or ending of September, till the end of June. So July, August, and the first and second week of September. There's no lajan. There's no money. We have to set goals. Our kids goes for camps. 
we have other things to do. We have a mission. We have bills to pay. So the first thing, make sure you set goals. Because when you have goals, it's easier for you to aim at it. You just target it. And straight away, you're able to pinpoint it. I'm not saying straight away you'll be able to financially sound. No, 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 no. It takes time. Practice makes a man perfect. So slowly, little by little, you reach there. Start as soon as you can. Don't wait till when you get a lot of money. No, that's not how we do it. You don't wait till when you have a salary of 5,000 zloty. Start as you have 1,500, 2,000 zloty. Start saving as your parents are paying your fees for you and they give you a pocket money. That small amount of money that you get, you have to start saving it. And you stop bothering your parents. When I was in Ukraine, there, how many of you were in Ukraine? Oh, a lot of people. Okay. Your time, people can work. At my time, we don't work. You are caught, you are in trouble. Deportation. That means 10 years, Europe, America, meaning North America, and South, maybe. Australia. <laughs> the only place you can go is Asia. <laughs> you can go. So, what do I do in order to help? We had a group. And I, our group was the first uh, foreigners that were in the newspaper to do some other things. So we were going to some restaurant and we were singing with, uh, you know, Ukrainian songs and, you know, uh, other things. And I still remember some of the Ukrainian songs, you know. Yeah. Some song. Folk songs. It was a folk song. Okay. <laughs> the next one is spend less than you make. Spend less than you make. If you know that you are, you are earning around 3,000, I beg, cut your coat according to your size. Don't go beyond it. That's why most of your friends are running away from you. Because they know that you're going to borrow. Or you come to their house. I beg, what is in the fridge? They first enter. They, hello, enters the fridge. <laughs> Do you have some stew? <laughs> maybe I can make some rice and or maybe some manka. All right? <laughs> Don't be like those people because... They will not let you come to their house. Create a budget. So as I told you, within January, uh, September, the ending of September till June, we, we work. So that means three months. And everything that we do, my wife knows me about that and my son knows it. I have a budget. How much does it cost? That's my first question. I'm not cheap. No, it's not I am cheap. But I'll first ask, how much does it cost? And he knows what is the, within the limit that he can get. And he knows how I am. And now he is also doing the same thing. He's beginning to learn from it. So you should, have, you should create a budget. In everything that you're doing, there should be a budget that you, you have. Within a week, you should have a budget. Within a month, you should have a budget. Let's say you are coming from Vrosov to, Paul, uh, to Warsaw. What was your budget? Yeah, let me ask. What was your budget? Did you have any budget? So, you know, this is a very nice conference. So by the time you go back, you have blown more than you have. And later you say that, uh-oh. The next one, put your savings on autopilot. That is when, when things are good, you don't touch it. Don't touch it. 
this is what we did. Maybe it might help you. Anytime we have a chance to have, let's say, some foreign currency, whether dollar or euro, we save it. That becomes our savings. You know why? Because later on when you change it, it's more. <laughs> and it helps. Sometimes we have it and we don't want to touch it because that is where we see like it is very, very important. So we don't touch it. You put it on autopilot. Only times when it is difficult. Time that is appointed to for that saving. The next one. Always take free money. If somebody gives you, take it. <laughs> Don't waste time. I still have that problem. But remember, it's not all money that you should take. <laughs> there are some money that will put you into trouble. Okay? If a dear brother is giving you too much money, you better think. If a dear sister is giving you too money, you better think. All right? I'm not talking about that one. A proper legitimate money, okay? That one, don't waste with it. How many of you file for your tax? Tax return. Very good. And sometimes you get some returns, right? It's very, very important. You keep it. <laughs> don't waste that time with it. When you get that chance, use it quickly. Get that tax return. How many of you knew that there is a tax return? Only a few. So that's why you should work on it. These are easy money that you can get. All right. The next one is don't go crazy, uh, house crazy or tech crazy. As I said, Samsung is releasing. Apple is also re releasing. Don't get crazy. My niece wanted to buy a phone. And she asked me, because she knows I love, I love electronics. And I said, well, what are your aims? What would you do with it? Well, uh, she's into the media in our church. So she said, I will be taking some photos. And I said, I have 14. It's, it's quite OK. Actually, 13 Pro. And the Pro Max has the same chip like the 14. It's just the 14, they have brought it new. That's all. But you don't need the Pro or the Pro Max. You are not into YouTubing or you are not into some serious photographing or videoing that you need that kind of high density. So, you, you see, there are some certain things you just have to halt yourself. It's beautiful to have it. Yeah, 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 I have it. Boom. 200 slotty screen. Then you put it under your bed. You return to your lovely Android. I hope you don't do that. Protect yourself. Uh, in my previous um, uh, slide, I told you that you have to invest. You have to learn how to protect yourself. As you are here, when you are going somewhere, when you are traveling, if you have a chance that you will travel abroad, get some insurance. You can get some insurance that will help to protect you. As you are here, I'm not going to do any advertising for any kind of um, bank or any company. You can go to some banks. For example, I have a small kind of life insurance. It's very, very small. I pay 42 or 43 zloty, and I get some other benefits out of it. If you have a chance that you are going to, if you have the chance that you are, you are having a work or you are uh, going to have a full contract, you will have the national insurance. That is also a beautiful thing that you can have. All right, let me skip it up. 
Don't let the financial world intimidate you. It's very important. The financial world will always intimidate you. You will hear that now the stock is crashing. Now this bank is liquidating their stuff. This and that, this and that. Don't let it intimidate you. Okay, let's do quick. Okay. The next one, and then I'll be ending. The next slide. Okay, so how to make a budget, rather the budget, the last one. How to make a simple budget. Not the financial goal. Okay, no problem. Start with your total money you have each week. Start with a week, then later on you start with a month. It will help you. Estimate the amount that you need to spend. It's really important. The important things. I'm not talking about, you know, uh, going to your uh, McDonald's and other things. I'm talking about important things, okay? Then the next one, you make, um, now take the second amount away from the first and write the money. This is how much you have left. That is your balance. The fourth one, decide on other items you need to buy which are not so important. Come up with the estimated goal, so a budget on it. Then the last one, when you take the last amount away from the one above, you will have, you'll be left with the money you, you use in other ways. Maybe you can save it. Thank you very much. Very quickly. Some questions. Um, let's see then. Would there be any chance for questions? Okay. So how many how many questions that we can take? Three. Okay. So three questions. All right. Anybody? Yeah, just take the... Uh, all right, um, yes, please. Yeah, I had a question. Um, I think you're talking about uh, planning your finances and you're mm -hmm. talking about tithing. Um, how would you tithe? Like, do you tithe the gross or the net? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Let me make it simple. They're very simple, all right? What you have after your expenses, uh, not expenses, after um, your rent and other things, some people do it that way because there is no other rule with it. God said that tenth of it, of course, but if you know that you don't earn a lot. And after your payment and everything, you don't have much. Whatever you have, you can do. But if you have more, that when you check on it, when you have a, a plan for your, uh, your budget or any plan that you have, when you have it like this, you should make sure that you have the 10% first and you give it to the Lord. Next time we'll talk about it, because that one is a gate opening for you. The other part, I, say, I said it in two ways, because there are some people that, let's say you are earning 2,000 or 3,000, your utilities and everything is almost 2,500. Uh, let's say you are earning 3,000, you are, you are getting around 2,500 uh, 2, uh, for everything. You are left with only 500 for food and other things. So it's different in that way. I hope I have asked for you. I, w I wasn't talking about rent and stuff. I was talking mm -hmm. about like maybe taxes. Like um, Taxes? Yeah. Do you pay like before taxes or after? Um, taxes, this is a must. No, no, no. Uh, like
that the tax? Do you tax the, m the, m the money left with taxes or before the taxes? Or okay, depending on what work you're doing. All right. There are some work that, uh, for example, I'm working with, m uh, with my wife. Every month you have to pay uh, tax. It's, it's with it. You have to pay. So that one, first tax, then after that tight. Because the state, you, you need to pay the, because that is the tight also for the state. How would you enjoy all this beautiful place if you don't pay the tax and the tight? Tight for the Lord, tax for the state. All right, next person. Yes, please. Yeah, um, we have thought that, or we have thought that, uh, taught us about saving, and what uh, the end goal of saving. We can save money probably, but use it as. as What's the end, uh, the end, end part of the saving? Yeah, end goal of saving. Yeah. Okay, so if you want to save, it has a purpose. I don't think I would just say I want to save. Yes, uh, I can save probably to buy a phone. Okay. An mm -hmm. iPhone. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> iPhone 15. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh huh. So that's like uh, I've put my money to uh, uh, an, a not useful liability. Mm -hmm. uh, so, how can you teach us uh, to get use good use of our, s of our saving? Probably to multiply our savings in future. Uh, one, as I said, you, ha you have a specific reason for that saving. When you reach that goal, after you reach that goal, you have to go zero. You have to start again. And there are some other savings that you can go to with the bank. That you can get an interest rate on it. All right? Savings is for a specific thing. So if, let's say, my saving is to help my son get his car, when he reaches, I have to give him that money. That means I have to go back again and, have, and go back to my drawing board and start again. What is my next, um, you know, savings? So you just have to know that what is your purpose? When you reach that purpose, what can you do? Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Anybody? Yes, please. Um, okay, so you mostly talked about um, people that are schooling and working or people that are mostly working. So what about some of us that get, like, money from our parents and it's for a fixed amount of, amount of months? How do we plan? Because sometimes we, the things become more expensive. Um, expensive than we expected so the fixed amount has to still okay reach. lovely i've been in that position but let's do it let's make a practical thing quickly do you mind how much do you get from your parents let's say yes please <laughs> don't worry any amount <laughs> okay i have a sister yeah so let's say <laughs> <laughs> so for um for three months I can get like five hundred or like six for months. your for yes. your upkeep. Yes. Okay. Within three months, it's not all the time that things are like that. Sometimes you might be one, you have to understand that this amount is for three months. That's your budget. And you can choose to eliminate some unwanted things. For example, each week going to, or each day going to McDonald's. You can re eradicate that. And that is going to reduce some amount that is in that 500. And that amount can be your savings. And that is going to help you reach some goal sometime. And that part, that month that you are getting also, you can use that part also for tightening. Sorry? <laughs> it's less. The moment I said tighten. <laughs> you know why? Because the moment you got that money, it became yours. 
And now you start to hold it. You have a grip on it. If it was a money that you were giving just to spend it, you wouldn't think about it in that way. Three months. You have three months to use that 500. So you have to budget each month. How much can you spend? What are the things that you can eliminate? This is very, very important. What are the things that you can eliminate? Because if you don't learn how to eliminate some certain things, let me give a practical example. Sorry, please. When I was schooling, I was getting some amount of money. I think at that time, uh, um, I think $100 a month. Also, $100 a month. Now, $100, I have to pay, I, I have to have some food, or sometimes it goes even up to two months. Now, I decide to make food in my fridge. I cook. I put it in my fridge. I eat once or twice. Because you have not reached that stage. This is one of our problems. We have not reached some certain stage. So don't get yourself into some certain stage. All right? If you cannot buy a Bentley, don't go and hire a Bentley. You get my point? It's just like one boy that went to a uh, university who wanted to impress a girl. He went to a rent, a G-Wagon. And on the way, as everybody is flexing in the campus, he just turned the G-Wagon and stepped on the gas, and the car somersaulted. All that he could do is run away. So if you are not yet there, eliminate some certain things. Then you can save. The whole thing is how to save. How much can you save? I hope I've Okay. Do, do we still? Okay. Uh, okay. So my question is around yeah. uh, black tech. Uh, so there have been some conversations amongst young people that in general, uh, black tech is hindering our progress to save effectively. So how would you um, help us like, to deal with that term? Um, in com like compared to how to handle both black tax and savings? Tax? Black tax. So black tax is basically what people, um, mostly Africans, <laughs> you know, young people sending pari parents money every uh -huh. month and it becomes like a... A black tax. Okay. It becomes like a must, not mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, so it's called black tax. Okay. Okay, all right. <laughs> Responsibility is there. As I said before, cut your coat according to your size. We, I'll put it this way. Let me be frank a little bit. Sometimes we Africans, we overdo some certain things. You cannot do it. Tell the person the truth. If you can give, let's say, 100 zloty a month, Tell the person. Remember, you is it, I know I, I understand your point that it's your responsibility to take care of your mom. I have that as well. But at the same time, you have a responsibility to do also here. Imagine that you have wife and kids. Are you going to remove that money that is not for the, uh, for them? to give it to your mom. It is something that we Africans will have problems with. The moment we start working on it, what you can do for your mom, do. But don't kill yourself in it. Because imagine that if you starve your children, how good would it be for your mom? Have a budget. Have a plan. How much can you give a month or three months? Quarterly, yearly, how much can you give? Have a plan and deal with it. All right, thank you.
somebody. Um, hi. Um, I just want to ask. Um, I heard you guys when you're talking about debt and borrowing and everything. Sorry, what again. Um, when you're talking about debt and borrowing, right? What if when you make your plans, like for investment plans, right? And then you know, like you focus everything. You have your business plan. You have your cash flow focus, and everything is in order. But then you can't like finance some of the projects in the meantime. And then you wanna like borrow to like cover, and you focus that you're gonna pay it back, like good debt basically. And then, like, w- w- would you advise good debt, like, cause there, there are some people but like you can you can get good debt in like terms otherwise and everything. Like, what what do you do in those cases? Uh, as I said, debt is not a bad thing. All right. Sometimes you might invest in some certain things, you might lose it. The most important thing is, what is your core value? What do you want to do? What do you want to achieve? All the examples that I was given, all these people, they didn't start like that. Sometimes you are going to make investment. You are going to, you have to remove some savings, all right? It's not for that specific thing, but you have to put it in that place if you don't have any means. Savings, as I said, is for a specific thing. But if you're having a business and you need to finance this one with that uh, savings and you don't have any other option because if you go to the bank, you have to pay the interest rate and other thing. Why don't you use what you have? And it will cover up. Thank you. Shall we put our hands together? Right. When when it comes to the issue of finances, trust me, we can go on and on and on. And I can tell you one thing for sure, that there are many school of thoughts. There are many school of thoughts on finances. But, you see, we, we need to be a people who understand how these things operate and how they work. Because when you do understand, you save yourself from a lot of future crises. Save yourself from a lot of future crises. The rate at which a lot of people find themselves getting into financial crisis, even though some time back, if you should look at the history of their life, they were very well to do, has got to do with certain mistakes that could have been eliminate, I mean, eliminated. And so I believe with this presentation, if not for anything at all, you have learned a thing or two that you can apply to your finances and it's supposed to help you. I didn't know that sending money to support family was now called black tax. I didn't know. So thank you for enlightening me. I mean, when it comes to that, we've been called to honor our father and mother. So helping or supporting the family, it's okay to do so. But like our dear brother said, you don't do it at the expense of breaking your back. There are some people who have made up their minds that in as much as maybe I'm just 23, 24, 25, or the moment I get into a job and I'm working, I must build a house for my parents. And this is actually leading a lot of the youth to indulge themselves in things that they are not supposed to. Do you understand? Is leading a lot of you to do things that they are not meant to. And I like the tag they put on it. I want to make Mama proud. Mama is already proud of you. Mama is already proud of you. Again, when the time comes and you are able to support, nothing stops you from doing that. Are we okay? Right. Um, I think later we will delve even more into this. And we want to say thank you so much for this presentation. Can we put our hands together one more time? (laughs) Amen. We're looking at a time of having a a session where we'll break into groups and have some discussion. But 
I can see it's already time for our meet and greet, and some of you can't wait. And so we'll find a way to get this discussion done, um, but probably not now. Or maybe this is what we're going to do. I know, I know brothers who don't even know how to open conversation with sisters. And so today I'm going to give you free tips. I'm going to give you free tips. Don't just go to the sister and be like, Hey, so you, you came from Gidans. Wow. So, so you mean you were in the train for how many hours? Don't do that. Don't do that. All those brothers that have been asking, how many dogs do you have at home? It's not necessary. Ah, so your dog is also called Bingo. Oh. Engage in meaningful conversations. Are we together? Today we wanted to actually handle something about healthy relationships and all that. But it's rather unfortunate we, we couldn't engage. But I believe we are going to do it. So even as you are meeting people, you are having conversation with them. Please do well to engage on those levels. Are we together? All right. Just before we, we take our break, we want to do that at the end of a praise break, which our dear Dickness Nobukle will be leading us. Shall we please be on our feet as we welcome Dickness Nobukle?
gonna keep the Lord in sight. Amen. You, 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 you look like you really want to dance some more. I, I, I don't know, but that is how you look. Let's go. You, you look like you really want to dance some more. Are you ready for tonight? Someone, are you ready for tonight? Are you ready for tonight? Are you ready for tonight? I let me see how you are going to do it tonight. Let me see it. Let me see it. Oh yeah, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Let me see how you do it. Let me see how you do it. Let me see how you do it. Let me see let you Oh yeah, I see someone doing the guara guara. Hallelujah. Hmm. Tonight, eh? Hmm. You see, that, that there is a reason why we decide to wear casual on Saturdays. Because on Saturdays is not the days we come in. You get it. If your shoe would disturb you, take it off. Oh. I don't want anything to distract you. Amen. Because we are here to give God praise tonight. People of God. Um, I think there's one last thing that I left when I was introducing our dear pastor. I, I, I have to, we have to acknowledge he came with some wonderful people from their youth group. And these are leaders who are helping other people to also grow in their faith. And his dear son, shall we give it up for them? Wow. Amazing. 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 Thank you for coming with him. We appreciate you. I, I had a special time with them when I last visited. Um, right? That was, and they're amazing people. And I know that is a, is a relationship that is being built. One of these days, we will get you here to also speak to us. <laughs> That's amazing. All right. So, people, this is the part that we take our break. We continue at exactly 6 p.m. So, we, we encourage everyone to be here seated by 5.55 p.m. God bless you. Go out and, and socialize with someone. God bless you.